Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So today what we're going to talk about is the Ruger Wrangler 22 long rifle 6 shot revolver. Oh hold on a second, I thought we were going to talk about the Heritage Rough Rider 22 long rifle 6 shot revolver. Well and I thought we were talking about the Chiapa 1873 22 long rifle 6 shot revolver. What's up? Well, there's no need to argue about it since we have all three. Why don't we just compare all three to each other and see which one's the best one? Yeah, sounds good to me. Let's do it. Yeah, I can work with that. All right, guys, I can take it from here. So, yeah, we're going to talk about the Ruger Wrangler 22 long rifle revolver, the Heritage Rough Rider 22 long rifle revolver, and the Chiapa 1873. I'm going to tell you what I like about all three of them, what I don't like about them, and we're going to see which one stacks up in my opinion. So stay tuned. Let's talk about these three guns. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about these three revolvers. But before I do, I would like to give a big thanks to Shooting Surplus for sponsoring this video. They are actually my first video sponsor and hopefully not my last. Now, I've purchased items through these folks before, and they are absolutely great to work with. They also have items such as survival gear, emergency medical kits, camping gear, knives, and even e-bikes if that's your thing. So check them out because they are truly a one-stop shop. The website is easy to navigate, the shipping is fast, and the customer service is absolutely outstanding. So please show them some love, check out their website, and consider giving them your patronage. I don't get any kind of a kickback or make any money if you shop with them, so I have no reason to send you there except for excellent selection and service. As always, anytime we're handling firearms, the first thing that you want to do is you want to do a verification that the guns are actually empty, so we can look at the Heritage Rough Rider here. We have six empty cylinders. We are dealing with an empty and safe firearm. Let's look at the Chiapa. We are dealing with an empty and safe firearm. All six cylinders are empty. And we look at the Ruger. All six chambers on the Ruger are also empty. So we are dealing with three unloaded safe firearms. I have no ammunition on the bench. I have no ammunition even out of the cabinets. Okay, now for the fun stuff. I've got the guns laid out here in from top to bottom in order of price. Uh, most expensive to least expensive. Uh, the Ruger at the top, uh, you could pick this Ruger up on the Shooting Surplus website for about $190. MSRP, according to the Ruger website, is $269 MSRP. So this is by far and away the most expensive of the three. Uh, the Chiapa, if you were go to go to uh, Shooting Surplus and look at it as of the date of this uh, video, uh, you could pick this gun up for about $155. MSRP according to Chiapa is $185, so this is the middle of the road. The Heritage, uh, if you were to go to Shooting Surplus right now, you can pick this gun up for about $130. And I can't find an MSRP on it. It's not on the Heritage website anywhere, and I, I don't know if it's a discontinued model or what the deal is on it, but I've, the most expensive place I found to buy this particular model was $165 at another vendor online. So let's talk uh, basic comparisons. They all have about the same barrel length, 4.75 inches, 4.75 inches, and the Ruger Wrangler is 4.6 inches in length. They all have the same sights. They're non-adjustable, uh, groove sight in the back, fixed blade sight up front. They've all three got plastic grips, so they're all the same style of grips. They are all single action. They are all six shot revolvers. They are almost identical in form and function for the most part. I tried to get three guns that were as close to the same as physically possible. Let's talk materials. Uh, the Ruger, the frame on the Ruger is an aluminum alloyed frame. They use full steel on the, on the cylinder and they use full steel on the barrel. The grips themselves, are they call them polymer, I'm just going to call them plastic, and that's exactly what they are. The Chiapa is made out of Zamac. The whole gun is made out of Zamac. The barrel, 
the cylinder, the frame, everything. And what is Zamac? Zamac is, a, is an alloy made mostly of zinc. They've added some aluminum, they've added some copper and a couple of other things. It's, it's got a little higher industry standard than regular old zinc, but for the most part, the gun is made out of Zamac. Uh, the grips are plastic as well. Now what Chiapa has done, because you can't use Zamac for pressure, is they have put in a steel barrel sleeve in the barrel. Well, that's actually the, the sleeve that the bullet travels down and where the rifling is located. And if you look at the cylinder uh, chamber right there, you can see that there is a steel sleeve in the cylinder chamber. And that's how they get away with making the entire gun out of Zamac. The Heritage, the frame itself is also made of Zamac. Uh, it's a low melting point metal. The grips are plastic, however the cylinder and the barrel are solid steel. There is no, no Zamac in the cylinder and the barrel. Uh, all three of these grips are plastic grips. Uh, of the three, I actually like the Heritage's grip the most. Uh, it, seems, it seems a little grippier that they've... the. Uh, the pattern that they've put in the, uh, the the grip seems a little more positive and a little more a little more grippy, for lack of a better term. And hopefully, I can focus in on here, and hopefully, you can see that uh, those are actually little stars that they put on the grip. I think that's really really neat. I really like that added little touch. And the Chiapa, it's it's a form of checkering, but it feels really really flat and really really smooth. And I don't see that I'm going to get a whole lot of grip out of that. And the Ruger has got the same kind of checkering. It's just finer, and it also feels fairly smooth. I don't see that I'm going to get a lot of purchase or grip on that. The other thing I want to show you is the grip widths. They are almost identical, and if I had to say one was the widest, I would say the Chiapa might be about the widest grip out of the three, but they're all really, really close as far as grip width is concerned. Fit and finish. Let's talk quickly about fit and finish. Uh, all three guns coming out of the box, the fit and finish was uh, definitely adequate. The Ruger was by far and away the nicest as far as fit and finish is concerned, followed very closely by the Heritage. In fact, I would call the Ruger and the Heritage almost identical with some very minor differences. The Ruger just does edge it out a tiny little bit as far as fit and finish is concerned. The Chiapa was by far and away the worst. It doesn't take a whole lot of looking to find some machining marks down there on the trigger guard and some places where they just didn't quite take the time to go ahead and machine it off. In fact, if we look really close, you can see that Chiapa didn't even take the time to square up the rear notch. The rear notch on the right side is most definitely not square. It is crooked. Now, I know I could go ahead and take a file and go ahead and square that up myself, but you know what, doggone it, this is a brand new pistol and I shouldn't have to do that. So I am counting that as a strike against the Chiapa as far as fit and finish is concerned. All right, let's talk about weight. I put all three of these guns on my postal scale, which is a digital postal scale. The Ruger Wrangler came in at one pound, 14.3 ounces. The Chiapa came in at one pound, 15.5 ounces. And the Rough Rider came in at 1 pound, 13.7 ounces. So the Rough Rider is by far and away the lightest of the three. The Chiapa is the heaviest, and the Ruger comes in somewhere in the middle. All right, let's talk about cylinder gap and end shake. I got a lot of, a lot of comments when I did my Heritage uh, Rough Rider video with the 6-inch about uh, cylinder gap on the gun. In fact, one of the comments was the cylinder gap on the Heritage is borderline criminal. So I did a little research. Uh, typically what the industry standard says for cylinder gap is anywhere from 3 thousandths to 11 thousandths of an inch is acceptable cylinder gap. Uh, as far as end shake, the industry standard for end shake is anywhere from 2 thousandths to 5 thousandths of an inch. What is end shake you ask? End shake is if you were to pull the cylinder forward and backwards laterally along the gun, it's the distance between the full back and full forward. Every cylinder has got a little bit of end shake. They don't fit in here perfectly tight. And that is the acceptable tolerances for the industry as far as end shake is concerned. 
So how did these three guns stack up? Well, the Ruger came in, I got a gap of five thousandths of an inch, which falls right dead down the middle of what is acceptable as far as gap is concerned. It had three thousandths of an inch end shake, so it is dead down the middle as far as the norm for end shake. The Chiapa had an eleven thousandths of an inch gap, which is way at the top end of acceptable. The end shake for the Chiapa was actually right down the middle again with three thousandths of an inch. The Heritage Rough Rider, they had a six thousandths of an inch gap. I do not call that criminal by any means of the word, but the end shake on the gap was about four thousandths of an inch. Just to give you some uh, something to reference, uh, Colt's maximum cylinder gap is fourteen thousandths of an inch. That's for a Colt rimfire uh, revolver. Smith & Wesson for all of their rimfire revolvers say anywhere from 8 to 12 thousandths of an inch max as far as cylinder gap goes. So all three of these guns actually fall within the acceptable range of cylinder gap as far as other manufacturers are concerned, but the Chiapa is by far and away the loosest out of all three of them. All right, let's talk about operation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the Heritage and the Chiapa away. Let's talk about the Ruger and basic operation. So the first thing we're going to talk about is cocking the hammer. To cock the hammer, it is one, like two, three, right at the end. So it's, it's basically a three-click hammer. Uh, the trigger on the Ruger actually feels really nice. Uh, I have no complaints about the trigger. I will know more when I shoot it. Uh, as far as loading it is concerned, the loading gate on the Ruger is really nice and snug and firm and not at all loose. It stays open really nice. It's kind of got a cam over effect, if you will, and when you get it to that point, you can tell that the loading gate is just going to stay open. When the loading gate is open, the cylinder spins free, and it spins free in either direction. There is no indexing or anything like that. It's just a free spooling cylinder. I like that, and I don't. I like that as far as loading is concerned. I don't have a problem with it. But as far as unloading is concerned, when you come to push the, the uh, loading rod, you're going to have to kind of hunt for the holes to find the loading, to find the hole to unload the spent cartridges it's because the cylinder doesn't index. I don't know how crazy I am about that. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it'll grow on me. But that is one thing I just, I really don't like about the free spooling cylinder. But it is for loading, it actually is kind of nice to have that. It doesn't have any clicking, so you don't have any undue wear on the gun as you're spinning it to load it. Uh, I could take that or leave it. I'm really not too keen on it as far as the unloading is concerned because then you got to kind of have to hunt for the hole to find the hole. And it really is, if, if you don't find it, you just keep spinning until you find the hole. So it's really not a horrible thing. As far as removing the cylinder, I have no problems removing the cylinder. It removes. I'm only going to remove the cylinder on the Ruger because they all pretty much remove the same. You just flip the loading gate open, you push the little button, you pull out the pin, and the cylinder falls right out. To put it back, you just do everything in reverse order. And make sure it works, and that's it. That's, there's nothing to it. Now let's talk about the Chiapa. Uh, the Chiapa's hammer, one, two, three, so it's your standard three-click hammer. Trigger again on the Chiapa doesn't feel bad. It's got a little bit longer trigger pull than the Ruger does. In fact, it's, it's got a considerably longer trigger pull. Uh, the Ruger's is much, much faster. You don't have to pull it as far to, to disengage the hammer. Uh, I'll see how I like that when I shoot it on the range, but uh, it definitely has a longer trigger pull as far as the trigger weight is concerned. It's, it's about the same as the Ruger. Uh, the loading gate, again, the, the loading gate stays open really nice. It kind of has a cam over effect. The spring is nice and strong and it stays open. And this cylinder, you have to half cock this one to turn it. This cylinder does index, which is kind of nice. I, I, I actually kind of really like the indexing, especially for the unloading because you don't have to hunt for the hole. You just index it to the next spot and you're right in there. While I'm in here and I'm running this push rod, I want you to go ahead and take a good look at that push rod right there. And then I'm going to try with my other hand to run the push rod for the Ruger. I would like you to look real close at the size differences of the push rods on those two guns. The Ruger push rod is 
twice, if not three times the diameter of the Chiapa. That Chiapa push rod is really, really small. It's really, really thin. You would think for the money that you paid for this Chiapa, they could afford to put in just a little bit of extra metal and put a slightly heavier duty push rod on this thing. It is really a, it's just almost a needle. And I can very easily see that if you have a stuck casing or a cartridge, that you could possibly bend that push rod. Especially if you have the WMR cylinder with the Chiapa and the Chiapa is available with a WMR cylinder. So you can shoot rimfire magnums out of the Chiapa. Uh, that's something I actually missed on the Ruger. The Ruger does not have an option for WMR. If you want to shoot WMR out of the Ruger, you got to go to the next model up and you're going to pay upwards of $700 for that gun unless you can get it on sale somewhere. MSRP from the Ruger Red site, website, it's right around 700 bucks. I digress. <clears throat> but as far as the function of the hammer, I, I, the clicking of the, of the hammer is really, really positive. The loading gate is fine. The indexing is fine. The trigger does seem to be considerably longer than that of the Ruger. Heritage. Let's talk about the Heritage, the Heritage hammer. One, two, three, four. So this is your standard four click hammer. It's just like an old Colt. Again, you have to half cock this to load it, flip open the loading gate. Now this was the complaint I had on the loading gate from my last heritage review. Seems a little loose, doesn't seem real positive to stay open, but it does stay open. I can fully see me inadvertently closing this on occasion. I wish they would put just a little bit of a heavier spring on that loading gate. However, this gun also indexes very nicely. So when you unload it, there is no hunting for the hole. You just run it to the index and you're right there and you're unloading. Also take a look at the push rod. The Heritage has a much heavier push rod than the Chiapa and it looks to be about the same as the Ruger. As far as the trigger on the, on the Heritage goes, it is right there. This, this thing's really got a nice trigger to it. There's, there's no creep, there's no take up. It is certainly a much better trigger than the Chiapa and it's right up there with the Ruger. Now let's talk about safety of the three guns. We're going to talk about the Ruger first because the Ruger is probably about the most sophisticated. Uh, the Ruger is a transfer bar safety system and you can see right there in the, on the back side of the gun between the hammer and the frame, you have a transfer bar there. And that transfer bar's job is to actually allow the hammer to contact the firing pin. So I'm going to try and do this on camera. I hope I can get it done. If I squeeze the trigger and I let the hammer go, and then I release the trigger, you can see the transfer bar is dropping out of the way. And that means when the hammer hits, it's not hitting the firing pin. So I'll do it again, except this time I'll keep the trigger squeezed. You can see the transfer bar doesn't move. And if I stop here and I pull the trigger in and out, you can see that transfer bar moving up and down. You have to have the trigger fully depressed when you shoot the gun to actually fire this because that transfer bar has to be in the position to allow the hammer to strike the firing pin. This gun does not have an external safety. It does not have an external hammer block. That transfer bar is the safety system on it. The Chiapa, on the other hand, has no transfer bar, has no hammer block like the Heritage Rough Rider does, and we'll see that in a second. And they very specifically state in the owner's manual that if you are gonna carry this gun in a holster, that you absolutely should only load five chambers, leave one empty and rest the hammer on top of an empty chamber. So when you have the gun not cocked, that hammer should have an empty chamber underneath it. Then when you cock the gun to shoot it, it loads into a full chamber and it's ready to shoot. Heritage, on the other hand, also does not have a transfer bar system, but they have a hammer block, i.e. a safety. Now this was kind of a gripe on my last video. I really didn't like it very much, but it's kind of grown on me. Now that I've shot my other Heritage more, uh, it, it actually has kind of grown on me. And it just is a little added extra bit of security so that you don't in inadvertently strike the back of the hammer and shoot the gun when you don't want to. However, in the owner's manual of the Heritage, it also says that if you are gonna carry this thing, is, i.e. in a holster, you should only load five chambers leave one chamber empty, and when you have the hammer down, resting, it should be resting on an empty chamber. Even though you have a hammer block here, they still recommend resting on an empty chamber. As always, follow your manufacturer's instruction, read the owner's manual yourself, 
verify that you know how to operate the gun safely. The final thing I want to talk about is, is now that I've had these guns, I have not fired a round out of them yet, and that's going to be the next thing I do, go to the range and shoot them. But I've been kind of handling them and, you know, had them out of the box and been getting used to them and understanding their function of them. And just from having the Chiapa out of the box and pulling the hammer and cocking it and working it and spinning the cylinder and things like this, I want you to look really closely right there at the cylinder. You can already see it is actually, I can actually grab those with my fingernail. It's already creating grooves in the side of that cylinder. And that's because that cylinder is made out of that Zamac material, that zinc alloy. Something that the Ruger and the Heritage do not have on their cylinder. And the, the catch for the indents or the indexing catch is steel. And it's dragging on the cylinder, which is normal operation. That's the way they're supposed to work. But it is already starting to cut a groove in the cylinder. And I'm really not liking that. I can't imagine it's going to take too many years before that groove gets really deeply cut or that these uh, indexing marks start getting hogged out and we might have start having timing and indexing problems. Really not excited about the, the Zamac cylinder here. All right, so that's about all I can talk about with these three guns sitting on the bench, except for one little fun nerd fact. Uh, as I was doing some research on these guns online, Traditions Firearms also makes an 1873 revolver. And by all respects, I believe it is the same manufacturer in Italy making the 873 for Traditions as is making the 873 for Chiapa. Uh, and why do I believe that? Because when I look at pictures of the gun on the internet off of websites and such, it's got the same manufacturer proof mark, CF, with, with a circle around it and Italy underneath it. It's got the same proof marks on the side of the frame here. The bolt patterns are the same. The guns look identical. They even have a little gold, uh, little gold emblem, emblem right here for traditions rather than for Chiapa the guns look absolutely identical so check me if i'm wrong but i do believe that the same manufacturer in italy that's making this gun for chiapa is also making it for tradition they didn't even bother to change the model it's still an 1873-22 so i think it's the exact same gun so let's go ahead let's back bag these things up uh, we're going to take these things to the range. I'm going to shoot them. We're going to check some accuracy. I'm going to run quite a few rounds through them. We're going to see if I have any misfires and see how I like the guns as far as shooting them is concerned. All right, so we're at the Red River Regional Marksmanship Center again. Uh, again in North Dakota, the wind is blowing. It's about 7 degrees outside. I'm a wimp and I want to go inside and shoot. So we're going to go to the indoor pistol range today, which is right here. And we're going to try out these three revolvers and see which one I like the best. So let's get out of the range. Alright, so the first gun we're going to try is we're going to do the Ruger Wrangler. Load up six shots and just see how it, uh, see how it shoots. Alright, first six, first six shots with the Ruger Wrangler. All right, so first six shots, uh, really like the trigger. The trigger works really well. Already I can tell you I don't like the fact that the cylinder is not indexing. You kind of got to hunt for the holes like I thought you would have to. But the gun itself is shooting really, really well. Very happy with how the gun is shooting. As far as the trigger pull and the function, it's very smooth. There's almost no recoil to it whatsoever. Uh, the weight really absorbs a lot of the recoil. So let's try another six shots here. The gun does definitely shoot to the left.
click. So the gun does shoot a bit to the left, but with non-adjustable sights, that's something we'll just have to rectify later. All right, so now we're going to shoot the uh, the Chiapa. Let's load up six shots, see how the Chiapa shoots. Really like the index. Now, what I did notice right away with the Chiapa is it's got a little bigger cylinder, so therefore the loading gate is a little easier. It's actually a little bit easier to get the uh, get the rounds in the cylinders or in the chambers. Uh, it's a little tighter with the Ruger. You've got to need a little bit smaller fingers to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, fire the first six shots out of the Chiapa. Right away I can notice with the Chiapa, the cylinder gap is bigger than the Ruger because I can actually feel the blast on my on my weak hand. It's not much, but I can feel it. Something I couldn't feel with the Ruger. Click. So yep, can tell right away uh, with the Chiapa that the cylinder gap is a little bigger. Do not like the trigger. The trigger on the Chiapa is not nearly as clean as that of the Ruger. It's got a lot more take up on it and I can certainly tell the difference on the trigger. But the gun itself seems like it's shooting all right. It's functioning correctly. I do like the fact that the, uh, the loading gate's a little bigger and I can get my fat fingers in there to load the gun. Click. All right, so I could definitely notice that the cylinder gap on the Chiapa is much wider than that of the Ruger. It blows a lot more smoke out the sides. I can actually feel it on my hands. Uh, the gun itself is shooting fine. It seems to be fairly middle, but it's a little on the low side. Uh, that's just a sight filing. But other than that, the gun is working. That cylinder gap is awful. The other thing I noticed is the unloading seems to be way stickier than that of the Ruger. It's much more smoothness to the unloading sequence on the Ruger, but I do like the indexing and I do like the oversized uh, loading gate for loading with my fat fingers. All right, and finally let's uh, let's shoot the Heritage Rough Rider. See how that goes. Now the Heritage Rough Rider, uh, right off the bat, I could tell the loading gate on this as well is just a little bit bigger than that of the Ruger. The shells go in. Uh, the shells go in much easier than the Rugers do. So, uh, yeah, they slide right in nice. First six shots with the Heritage Rough Rider. Got to turn that safety off. 
Safety works. Click. First six shots went real well. Uh, I really like the trigger. Uh, don't feel hardly any uh, any cylinder blast on my hands. Let's try another six shots. So it seems like it's working just fine. Really, really happy with the operation of it. Really liking the indexing factor. Push rod runs in and out smooth. Everything's working just as it should. All right, just for fun, uh, since I got it with the Rough Rider, uh, we're going to try the uh, WMR car, uh, chamber or cylinder. You can see the difference here between WMR and long rifle. There, there's quite a difference in there. Uh, nice thing about Heritage is they, they not only mark the WMR cylinder with WMR actual writing on there, but the... Uh, the long rifle cylinder's got flutes in it, and the WMR cylinder does not, so you can further identify it as a WMR cylinder. This is actually the first box of Winchester WMR ammo I have ever bought, so we'll try it out. We'll see how it works. All right, first six shots. 22 WMR. That's a little spicier than a 22 long rifle. Click. There's a little more, little more punch to those shells. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a little accuracy testing. I'm just going to do six shot groups with each pistol. Now, we're in an indoor range here, and I'm having a kind of a hard time seeing those front sights because they are black on black. So, and with my 51-year-old eyes, things are just not working quite as good as they should. But I'm going to really try hard to get them, get them as much in the middle as I can. I also refer you to the fact that I have never once claimed to be a good pistol shot, and I don't consider myself to be a good pistol shot, but... We'll see if we can't get them in there for you.
All right, now let's go ahead and try six shots with the Heritage Rough Rider. All right, finally, let's try six shots out of the Chiapa 1873. Do not like the trigger on this. Gun definitely shoots low. but low is fixable. Click. So let's just take a quick look at the targets here. Uh, these are the three guns, the Ruger, the Chiapa, and the Heritage. Uh, the Ruger's group was about an inch. Uh, the Chiapa's group was about an inch and three quarter. And the Heritage group is also about an inch if you count that flyer. If you take that flyer out, that group's, you know, just a shade over a half an inch. Now, this is at 10 yards or 30 feet. And uh, I think those are pretty respectable groups for all three of them. The Chiapa was obviously uh, the least accurate of the three. Uh, the Ruger, I would say, kept, probably came in second. And the uh, Heritage, actually, that, that's, a darn, that's a darn nice group. Uh, if you drop that flyer, it's a really nice group. Uh, I would have to say the Heritage probably has about the best accuracy out of the three. All right, I'm sorry this video has kind of gotten long, but I am reviewing three guns after all. So in summation, what do I think of the three guns and which one do I like the best? Well, let me start off by telling you which one I like the least. And right off the bat, I'm going to tell you the Chiapa is my least favorite out of all three. The fit and finish isn't there. The quality isn't there. I do not like the fact that the entire gun is made out of Zamac and that they're using uh, steel sleeves in the important areas. The, uh, the cylinder gap on it is absolutely atrocious. I could literally feel the muzzle blast on my hands. Uh, it, was, it wasn't painful or anything. I could just feel it. It had, a, it had the least level of accuracy out of all three of the guns. The Chiapa was my least favorite. Good things about the Chiapa, the loading port was nice and big. It was no problem to access it to get the shells in there. Uh, I do like the fact that it indexes at a half cock position when you're loading and unloading. I really like that a lot. And the price point is pretty tolerable. At $150, I guess it's okay. But when you think about it, when you can pick the Heritage up actually cheaper than you can pick up the Chiapa, that, that just puts the Chiapa right out of the running. So let's go ahead and take that gun and set it over here because... That is what it is. That's going to end up being a truck gun, and I'm just going to shoot it till I wear it out. So let's talk about the Ruger Wrangler and the Heritage together because they were so close, it's really hard to pick which one I like the best. Things I liked about the Ruger, the fit and finish, the quality, the transfer bar, uh, the hammer transfer bar system, really liked that. Uh, everything fit together really nice and tight. The trigger is excellent. Really, the, the Ruger is a very fine gun to shoot. However, at the Heritage, I really like the Heritage as well. The Heritage was more accurate than the Ruger. Uh, I like the fact that you can get it in a 22 WMR as a convertible, whereas with the Ruger, you have to step up into the next level and spend $800 to buy that. Uh, I really like the trigger of the Heritage. However, the fit and finish of the Heritage isn't quite what the Ruger's is, and the loading gate is a little looser than I would like it to be. So and it, when it really comes down to it, the two guns are extremely comparable as far as function, quality, fit and finish, all of that. Uh, the Heritage did have a little bit better accuracy, but what it really boils down to then is the price. Uh, the Ruger is pretty commonly sold for $200, or right around there. This gun's on... Uh, gun surplus for 190 msrp is 100 or is 269 
the heritage is by far and away more economical to shoot. Now, over the course of time, is the Ruger going to have better longevity than the Heritage? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We will find out. I do know that on my 6-inch Heritage, I've got well over 1,500 rounds through that gun, and it just keeps shooting, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So I'm expecting that this one would be the same. I'll continue to shoot both of these guns. If one of them fails first, I will certainly let you know about it and let you know if I have any problems with it. But if I have to pick a favorite... I'm going to pick the Heritage over the Ruger simply because as far as function goes, it functions just as good. The fit and finish is awful close. It's more accurate, and it's by far and away less money than the Ruger. Now, if you're liking this channel and you're liking this kind of content, please do me a huge favor by hitting that like and subscribe button down below and ringing that notification bell. That really helps out with the algorithms. It certainly does help out the channel, and the support is really appreciated, and I promise you I'll never ask you for money to support this channel. With that, let's go ahead and wrap it up. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by, and we will see you on the next video.